In 2009, German motorsports complex Nürburgring hoped to reinvent itself as a theme park with a record-breaking launch coaster. What followed, however, was a story of broken promises, injuries, and even scandal. But how could a simple theme park lead to so much controversy? Let's find out today on Theme Park Crazy. For almost a century, Nürburgring Germany's Nürburgring has been known as one of the most famous motorsports complexes on Earth. First built in 1927, this complex has hosted a plethora of notable Formula One races. It is perhaps most notable for being the site of Niki Lauda's near-fatal crash, which the award-winning 2013 film Rush was based on. The site is also home to the annual Rock am Ring, the largest music festival in all of Germany. For decades, Nürburgring would prove to be a national treasure, and following a boom in German motorsports in the 1990s, officials planned on taking the complex to the next level. In 2004, plans were announced for a new project named Nürburgring 2009. Nürburgring CEO at the time, Walter Kaffitz, said of the project, What we're calling Nürburgring 2009 is the logical development of our growth strategy. The plans would take the racing complex and turn it into a full-fledged theme park and resort. Officials planned restaurants, a new hotel, an entertainment venue, a nightclub, and an amusement center named Ringwerk. This center would feature a variety of attractions themed to motorsports. These included a car museum, arcade games, and a 4D theater, with the star attraction being a brand new roller coaster named Ring Racer. American manufacturer SNS Worldwide was hired to build the attraction, and it would be an updated version of their air launch coaster model. While the company did build the ill fated Hypersonic XLC at Virginia's King's Dominion, they had also built the much more successful Dodompa at Japan's Fuji Q Highland. The company aimed on further developing their air launch coaster model and would take on the ambitious project. Using the power of compressed air, this coaster was intended to take guests from 0 to 135 miles per hour in just two and a half seconds. It would be the fastest roller coaster in the world at the time, breaking the record of King to Ka, New Jersey Six Flags Great Adventure. Despite Ring Racer's short height and length, its speed alone was sure to captivate the general public. It would give thrill seekers a full formula racing experience, and it seemed like a surefire hit in the making. In 2009, the facility had completed construction, and a grand opening was held for Ringwerk. Due to continued maintenance though, Ring Racer wasn't ready for the park's grand opening. However, it did have a few preview runs with select passengers. One of these early passengers was famous Formula One driver Michael Schumacher, who gave extra star power to the ride's promotion. It's worth noting that because testing was still underway, the ride did not launch at its full speed during its preview runs. Instead of 135 miles per hour, the launch was around 87 miles per hour. Officials hoped that with continued testing, they would be able to hit the desired speed by the ride's proposed opening on August 15th. Well, August 15th came and went, and the ride was still not open. As it turned out, mechanical issues in July caused a delay, and the park was still testing the ride. They were eager to get it to reach its envisioned speed. Maintenance crews reportedly worked around the clock to get the coaster fully operational. If they couldn't hit that top speed, the world record would be out of reach. A few weeks later in September, things would take a turn for the worst. On September 3rd, 2009, maintenance workers attempted to increase the launch speed to the desired 135 miles per hour. All of a sudden, the pneumatic launch system violently exploded, sending assorted metal parts of the ride flying in every direction. The launch platform was completely destroyed, and the blast was so powerful that it was able to shatter glass 150 feet away from the launch platform. The explosion was so loud, it was reportedly heard at a gas station three kilometers away. Moreover, the blast would injure six maintenance workers as well as one hotel employee. Those affected suffered from inner ear damage from the sound, resulting in permanent partial hearing loss. As if all of this wasn't enough, Nürburgring's handling of the situation made it even worse. On the day of the incident, Nürburgring officials put out a press release. They reported that there were no injuries and that neither guests nor employees were in danger. Meanwhile, however, no ambulances were called to the scene of the explosion. First aid was given 
happen on the spot, but construction company buses were allegedly used to transport victims to the hospital. Many have speculated that officials didn't want to draw the attention of local politicians or the media. It wasn't until four days after the incident that one injury was reported, and it would be six days until every injury was reported. The whole thing seemed very shady, but there's even more to the story. During its development, local government officials, including state premier Kurt Beck, repeatedly promised the public that the Nürburgring renovations would be privately funded with no tax dollars involved. However, when officials failed to come up with a major investor, public funds would end up footing much of the bill. State Finance Minister Ingolf Doebel was accused of misleading Parliament about the use of tax money for the renovation, and would resign from his position in 2009. He would be indicted on 14 counts of embezzlement in 2012, and in 2014, he would be sentenced to three and a half years in prison. Meanwhile, Walter Kaffitz was given a 19-month suspended sentence for his alleged involvement. He would also resign from his position. Despite the controversy of the complex, though, Nürburgring hoped to open the coaster to the fanfare it deserved. Unfortunately, in November 2010, Abu Dhabi's Ferrari World would break the much sought after record for the world's fastest coaster with Formula Rasa. This coaster was built by Swiss manufacturer Intamin and features a 149 mile per hour hydraulic launch. While it takes four seconds for it to reach its top speed, it nevertheless put the record completely out of reach for Ring Racer. Even if it could reach its top speed, it still wouldn't be enough. After around four years of maintenance and adjustments, the coaster would finally open to the public on October 31st, 2013. The ride experience went as followed. Passengers would exit the indoor station and make their way to the launch track. The train would then latch onto the launch mechanism with guests waiting eagerly for takeoff. After a few seconds of sitting still, a burst of compressed air would pull the launch cable forwards, sending guests down a long straight section of track. This led to the ride's iconic turnaround, which would twist the trains upwards and downwards in the opposite direction. The ride would then zoom through a massive shopping center and would be visible to guests on the ground. After a long section of straight track, the train would then re-enter the Ringwerk building, shortly hitting the brake run and returning to the station. With a few adjustments and modifications, the coaster's top speed would end up being 99.4 miles per hour, a decent sized difference from the proposed 135 miles per hour. On the plus side, it would reach said speed in two seconds making for an acceleration only bested by Dodompa. On the contrary, while its launch was widely praised, the ride itself would receive a mixed response from enthusiasts. Reddit user PintoI007 described it as, Incredibly boring, the launch was fun, but wow, the rest of the ride was nothing. Moreover, Reddit user Julianus says, It was definitely a great launch, and the location was terrific, but the turnaround was nothing special, and while the rest of the track was unique, it was mainly just odd as a roller coaster. Coaster. The fact that we have two direct quotes from riders is astonishing, because after just four days of operation, nobody else would get to ride it. Since the ride opened so close to the end of the season, it didn't have much time to operate before the colder and less popular months. While the park eagerly awaited the ride's reopening in the 2014 season, the coaster would be brought to a screeching halt just months later. Shortly before the coaster opened, Nürburgring would go bankrupt. This was not surprising. Since its opening, the resort was not bringing in the attendance needed to justify the massive investment. Some had nicknamed the project Neuro Disney, referencing the initial failure of France's Euro Disneyland and officials scrambled to sell the property. The whole thing was an overinvested embarrassment, and it threatened to cost hundreds of residents their jobs. Shortly before the coaster was set to reopen in 2014, Nürburgring was purchased by German auto company Capricorn. Though the coaster was operational, Capricorn officials had no interest in running it. They knew such a troubled attraction would be way too expensive to maintain, and declared the ride to be not financially viable enough to reopen. They felt the complex wasn't generating enough income to be worth running the coaster. Capricorn planned on removing Ring Racer entirely and possibly relocating it to another park. However, German parks such as Europa Park and Holiday Park reportedly refused to buy the attraction. It seemed like the coaster would be scrap metal, but then things got even more complicated. Just months after Capricorn acquired Nürburgring, a Russian pharmaceutical billionaire named Viktor Karitonin bought a 99% stake in the complex. 
His purchase would be completed in 2016, and that year, Nürburgring's head of event management, Mirko Markfort, would take over as the new CEO. Markfort has gone on the record by saying that while reopening Ring Racer is not a number one priority, tearing it down is a last resort. He also said he would eventually make a decision on whether or not to reopen it. While the ride is reportedly still out of Nürburgring's price range, a recent increase in revenue may be enough to get it running again. Whether or not this coaster will eventually return to operation is unknown, but for now, its messy backstory and short lifespan alone make it at least part of one of the biggest failures in amusement history. Thanks for watching everyone, feel free to like, share, and subscribe. You can follow me on social media on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, or you can check out my website at ThemeParkCrazy.com. This is Theme Park Crazy, and I'll see you all next time.